Hi everyone, and welcome to this video on the top 10 mistakes in an online class. Uh, these are the mistakes that I've seen students make over the years um, in the various online courses that I've taught. And so I just kind of want to identify them in hopes that in watching this and seeing this, you'll be able to uh, hopefully avoid these in the future. So the first is not doing the work, and this seems a self-evident one, but time and again, students will get into an online class and they'll skip this assignment or that discussion and they don't realize the cumulative effect that has on their grade and it does so not participating in the discussions is the same as just not showing up for the week it it means you're not present you're not there and this you know the instructor does see this the instructor sees this actually better than uh, in a face-to-face -face class because as an instructor behind the scenes I can run a report and see exactly how interactive you were with the course if you didn't come in or you came in once but you didn't do anything um, I can actually see that if I, I can call up a report on that not meeting the deadlines uh, one of the biggest challenges for students is in an online class a lot of the responsibility is on them and they don't always they, they relish the freedom the opportunity the flexibility all of which are great for online learning but often they think that flexibility can extend to deadlines and things like that if the course is moving forward in a particular fashion those deadlines are important not just for the instructor who has to grade papers and get them back in an orderly fashion but also for you as the student in that you're not keeping up with or if things are built in the course that are interdependent if you're not caught up to where you need to be uh, it leaves you in the in the vulnerable position of having more challenges along the way in, in doing worse spelling and grammar uh, we have to think about in an online course one of the major and, and fundamental ways that we're going to do most of our communication is through writing and so how you write says a lot about you not taking the time to spell check not taking the time to read over your work before submitting it can can ultimately negatively impact your performance or how not just the instructor but how your peers perceive you so making sure that if if this is a course that you're doing a lot of writing in you're taking that time to go back and read it's also problematic from uh, the perspective of your instructor or your peers because it often makes communication hard if you're not using proper grammar and proper spelling it's not always clear what you're talking about and then it becomes problematic because rather than having a good conversation on what the content is we're trying to decipher what it is that that the person is saying not paying attention to the facilitators posts um, instructors that are posting either in discussions or announcement boards or emails you know they're really trying to say hey hey pay attention there there's important stuff here for you to consider uh, there's important things for me to reach out and say I need you to understand or pay attention to this because this is an important thing maybe it's a course change maybe it's a you know trying to emphasize or clarify some particular assignment um, but not being aware of the facilitate or not paying attention to those and this even includes uh, the instructor's feedback. If you don't pay attention to the feedback they give with assignments, it makes it harder for you as a student to improve your overall performance in the course. Not reading the assignments in a, uh, not reading the assignments in rubrics. So in this case, you know, particularly in my course, I put a lot of time into assignment guidelines and rubrics and making sure you fully know what's expected of you with regards to an assignment. It's not just, hey, go out and do it and good luck, but I really want you to be able to have all of your answer, all of your questions answered as you read through the guidelines. And if, if there's something that's not clear, then contact me immediately and I'll look to ramify it. And I'll also use that to help me revise those assignment guidelines and rubrics. But you really do need to read these and you need to read them ahead of time. Reading them an hour before the assignment is due is going to leave you in hot water. Uh, making sure you read these in the very beginning of the semester, you can start thinking about how you're going to execute these assignments and activities throughout the rest of the semester. Confusing co course terms. Again, we're talking about communication with this one, and if we're if the instructor is laying out different course terms, particularly early in the semester, and saying you know these are important and I want to see these applied throughout the course, failure to apply them or 
not accurately applying them is going to influence or at least make the, the instructor suspect of how much of the work you're trying to do. Uh, some of these terms, particularly in my class that we're going to tackle, I, I, it will raise red flags if I see students that are not using them correctly or not clear of what they are as we get into the halfway and towards the end of the course. Not reading the paper comments, as I said before, you know, I will, I, not reading the instructor's feedback can really, really hurt your performance. I spend a lot of time in my feedback, and that includes not just discussion comment feedback, but also on all your papers. And I'll give you substantial feedback so that, you know, it's there not to shame you or to insult you or to make you feel inadequate. It's there so that when you go to write another paper or when you go to revise the paper that I've given you, you have the you have the tools necessary to improve that paper substantially. I want you to look at those comments as me trying to help you see where there are pitfalls and challenges in your writing because it not only is writing an important piece of this course, but written communication is still a central piece of, you know, how we function out there in work and in our day-to-day -day lives. Think of how many text messages, how many emails, how many Facebook posts. Those are all largely written communications, and I want to help you make sure you can effectively communicate. So when you get that feedback on different assignments, that's not me attacking you as a person. That's me trying to help you become a better writer. Not reading the readings, uh, I can tell you, particularly within my course, uh, you know, it becomes very, very, very obvious when students aren't doing the writing, when they get into the discussions, when they do the assignments. Uh, right off the bat, it's pretty clear, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because I'm very familiar with the writing, uh, with the readings for this course. I've designed the course specifically you know, over time to make sure I have readings that are great and, and really solid for what it is we're doing in this course. So I'm very familiar with them. And then it's also obvious because you usually the questions that I ask for discussion or for assignments, you can't really you can't really fake your way through it. You can't just give generalities. The expectation is going to, you know, the expectation in the content requires more than general statements. And so, you know, failure to do the readings is going to impact your grade because it's going to affect your discussions and participation. It's going to impact how well of, pa of, uh, of papers that you can write if you're not doing the reading that goes with that, uh, that, goes with that paper. Insufficient analysis. Uh, in my courses, you know, I want us to think a lot. I want us to try to continue to be critical. I don't expect you to be an expert in critical analysis or, or in, in all of this, but I do expect you to continue to push the your intellectual boundaries. And I do you know, I do expect to see that in the assignments. And I stack the assignments, the readings, the work in such a way that we build towards deeper and more critical analysis but that that needs to be there and there needs to be a continual drive on your end to try to you know to try to see more than just what's on the surface very much you know in any of the courses that that I teach and, and I think this is true for any other instructor is we're trying to get more than just what's on the surface we want to dig into the content and really think hard about what it is we're talking about I'm not looking for you to be an expert by any means by the end of the course, but I expect you to be able to have a more deeper, meaningful discussion around the, co the course content. And then finally, poor planning. Uh, without a doubt, you know, as you get into an online cl class, it's it's really up to you as the student to make sure everything's all set to go. That means having backup for your internet, for your computer, you know, being really prepared and knowing that it is on you to, you know, succeed in this course. I am always willing to help you and to work with you and get you to, the, you know, help give you the support to get you to that finish line but you do have to as a as an online student take a lot more responsibility into your hands and think strongly about you know what it is that you need to do so that's all for this mini lecture thank you very much for listening or watching and i will see you later bye